morning, everybody. I'm Andy Kolb, and I'm the Executive Director of the ARC Maryland. And I'm pleased to welcome you all to the ARC Maryland's 2021 uh, Statewide Chapter Volunteers of the Year Awards. I obviously haven't had my coffee yet this morning, so I'll make sure I'll take care of that right away. Uh, hopefully, you've all received your breakfast event boxes by now, and you're enjoying your tea or coffee. Uh, some delicious pastries and some other breakfast goodies. Um, the contributions of each of our honorees this morning are summarized on pages five through seven of your awards pamphlet. Um, so, um, and we, we are gonna go slightly out of order to accommodate some schedules. So don't worry if it appears we've skipped your name, we wouldn't and couldn't ever um, forget honoring any of you. Um, so this event is designed to be interactive. So as we honor the volunteers from each chapter, uh, I'll invite the chapter representatives here to also unmute and just say yay or congratulations. Um, we'll give the uh, leader of the organization the opportunity, the executive director, to make some brief remarks. And then we hope that our honorees will also make some brief remarks after that. So that's kind of the order of things this morning. Um, so for a little background, um, first, on our network as organizations of the ARC, I'd like to share a brief history with you. And um, Luke, you'll, you can go ahead and start that slideshow. You got it up, Luke? I can't see. There we go. So the ARC began in 1950 as a small collective of concerned parents and quickly grew. The ARC network in Maryland includes 10 local chapters and one state chapter, and together we support thousands of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their families across the state of Maryland. Despite the challenges that we have faced, our successes have been overwhelming. In 1971, the ARC filed litigation in Maryland, which led to the establishment of the right to public education as a state law. And this was before it was mandated by the federal government. In 1990, we developed and helped secure community supported living arrangements through legislation in Maryland. And those evolved into personal supports and other um, you know, community-based services for people. In 1991, the ARC was directly responsible for the passing of the transitioning youth legislation in Maryland. And in 1999, um, the ARC developed and secured a five-year governor's waiting list initiative of $116 million. So when we're talking yearly about trying to get 23 million more in the budget and things like that, we have to remember that in 1999, the governor put in $116 million to provide services to over 8,000 children and adults who are on the waiting list. And that was the Unlock the Waiting List initiative. So we've done it before, we can do it again. Uh, in 2002, the ARC expanded the Transitioning Youth Initiative to include services from the Maryland State Division of Rehabilitation Services, also known as DOORS. And in 2003, they, the ARC again tackled the issue of the right to education and expanded the law to last through the end of the school year in which the student with disabilities turned turns age 21. Um, and in, I'll just keep going, there's a couple more. In 2009, this is a big year for us. After tireless efforts, the ARC with our amazing partners and other local advocates got the Rosewood Center closed in Baltimore. Um, and 200 people who hadn't been able to experience life in the community finally got that opportunity. In 2014 and again in 2019, we again with our partners in our grassroots army fought for DDA funding mandates to be included in state minimum wage legislation. And that effort was a difficult road, but in the end we secured mandates needed to ensure community services would continue. And this past year, our increased visibility and advocacy led to a historic budget, historic budget appropriation for DDA services and supports and increases to education funding, including the addition of 100 slots for autism waiver. Uh, among many successes this session, we also worked with our legislative partners to sponsor and pass bills to require adult changing tables throughout the state for public buildings built or significantly remodeled um, beginning October 2022. Opportunities for parents to obtain independent education evaluations if the school failed to provide these evaluations within the timeframes required by IDA. 
and requirements at schools include parents and the student and any changes that they need to make to the way in which an IEP is implemented for a student in situations where school buildings are closed for 10 days or more. Um, so we're extremely proud of all the work we've been able to accomplish as an ARC network and family and thankful for our many partnerships that made these advances possible. Today, the chapters of the ARC provide an array of services and supports and are constantly evolving to meet the changing needs of people with disabilities and their families. ARC organizations throughout the state provide therapeutic group homes for youth, fully inclusive childcare centers, direct support professional training and career path initiatives, respite services, foster care, fiscal management services to assist people with self-directing their own lives, and we're currently working together to grow the self-advocacy network in Maryland. We are grateful for our partnerships and for the connectedness we have had to one another, which was particularly evident this past year. And so we wanna thank you all um, for being a part of our journey and our success. It wouldn't have been possible without each of you being honored today. And I'm gonna let the slideshow um, continue to play out because we wanna make sure that you all have the opportunity to see the wonderful things that each of the chapters of the ARC did this past year in Maryland. All right, are we at the end, Luke? Okay. Um, our Chapter Volunteers of the Year Award is presented for dedication to the ARC's mission to create a world where children and adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities have and enjoy equal rights and opportunities. And our first honoree this morning is Thomas Sand for the ARC Baltimore. Tom Sand has been a valued member of the ARC Baltimore's Board of Directors since 2010. While initially recruited for his financial expertise, his impact has been far broader. Tom has been a generous supporter of their annual golf tournament and art and around events. He has been a key contributor to their strategic planning process, executive transition, and search for their new CEO. Over the years, Tom has served in a variety of roles, board treasurer, vice president, and most recently president. He has provided a great deal of support as the ARC Baltimore has faced challenges brought on by the pandemic. The ARC Baltimore is incredibly fortunate to have Tom's commitment to leading the board and most importantly, his commitment to the people they support. Thank you, Tom, and congratulations. Kathleen Durkin, CEO of the ARC Baltimore, is here in honor of Tom. And Kathleen, before we turn the mic over to Tom, would you like to say a few words? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Andy. Um, I just, again, want to recognize Tom. He has been an amazing advocate for the people that we support and an incredible support during COVID. Um, no president wants to uh, jump on board when there's a global pandemic. And Tom was the exact president that we needed during this um, crisis. And not only will his uh, legacy be how he supported us and the people we support during the pandemic, but also our strategic planning process. So right before um, things shut down, we had spent almost a year developing our new mission and vision and values. And um, Tom was at the table throughout and really showed his leadership, but more importantly, his commitment to the people that we support and to our staff. And so we 
are so indebted to you, Tom, and thank you so much for your calm and steady presence during the last couple of years, but through the last 11 years, obviously, but especially through um, the last two years, I know it was a, a challenge for all of us, and I am so grateful that you were the president during this crisis, so thank you. Thank you so much. If you could pause for one minute, I think we're having a little trouble spotlighting. So I wanna give my team a chance to, to fix that. Oh, are you, okay, you're spotlighting now, great. Um, okay, go ahead, I'll turn it over to you, Tom. Andy, thank you, and Kathleen, I uh, uh, appreciate the kind words, it's um, humbling. Uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, when I first joined the board, um, you know, I had, I would say I had some understanding um, of the ARC and, and their services. Um, was actually a good friend of mine was leaving the board and, and sort of recruited me. Uh, but it was, it was something that, um, you know, I would say I had no idea when I got involved with the organization, um, just the breadth of services, um, the complexity of the things that, that the organization takes on, which, which I'm sure, you know, for, for the other ARCs um, in the state, it's, you know, there are very similar scenarios. And just the, you know, because I guess what, what I learned along the way is there's just so many different uh, situations and circumstances and things that have to be addressed um, and just how the people um, adapt and problem solve and just do you know, everything they can um, to sort of improve lives. Um, and I'm, you know, someone now has a, a 17 year old daughter, you know, with some learning disabilities. And, you know, I would say, you know, as she's getting closer to adulthood, um, you know, as a parent, um, it's, you know, I draw a lot of comfort knowing that there are organizations you know, like the ARC um, to help support her and help her transition. You know, she is someone that as she moves into adulthood and transitions into working, um, you know, she'll need a lot of help. And I know um, some of it, I, I don't think I'm equipped to provide. And so, um, you know, being associated with the ARC and seeing what they can do, um, how they just you know, find a way to, to figure it out. Um, it's just amazing work. So I, I'm honored to have been associated with them and have worked with them for so long. Um, and I know, you know, in now in a, in a different capacity, um, you know, I'm going to continue to do what I can to work with them. Um, but, but thank you for the award today. And um, again, I said, I am just humbled and honored to have been, you know, fortunate to have been able to work with such terrific people like uh, Kathleen and the people at the Art Hall. Thank you, Tom. Thanks for all you do. Um, next we go to Sherry Lee, Br I'm sorry, next we go to Josh Miller with the ARC Central Chesapeake Region. Josh has been an outstanding volunteer with the ARC Central Chesapeake Region for over a decade, serving on their board of directors since 2009. During his tenure, Josh has served on the ARC CCR's Quality Committee, which focuses on ensuring the people they support can live self-determined lives, a position he holds with great honor. Josh's commitment to both the board and Quality Committee is evident with Josh wrapping up his service to the board in June. His presence and impact will be missed dearly. Thank you, Josh, for your continued support of people with IDD across Anne Arundel County and the Eastern Shore. And here to honor Josh is also Jonathan Rondo, the president and CEO of the ARC CCR. Jonathan, would you like to say a few words? Yes, good morning, everyone. Um, Josh has been involved with the, with the ARC Central Chesapeake Region since uh, for over 30 years when we were the ARC Anne Arundel County. Um, and he has been a steadfast self-advocate and supporter of all people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Um, and we really see this as a way to honor Josh and his legacy that he has provided to the ARC uh, as, a new, uh, as new 
um, uh, uh, new self-advocates um, join our board and committees to help us uh, move the arc into a new generation of leadership uh, at every level. So on behalf of the entire ARC community, thank you, Josh, for your leadership uh, and dedication. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Josh. And thanks, Jonathan, for that, those kind words. Next, we honor Sherry Lee Bream, who's an active board member with the ARC Carroll County and served as their board president from 2007 to 2020 for the ARC Carroll County. During her tenure, the organization updated its strategic plan to reflect a transformational move away from facility-based services to more community-focused opportunities. Sherry Lee also directed a review and update of the ARC Carroll County's bylaws. While Sherry Lee brought strong administrative leadership to the board, she was also an active participant in any community building event she could attend. Outside of the organization, Sherry Lee is a champion advocate on statewide issues, talking directly with local delegation members and writing letters of support to governmental officials. The Art Carroll County is proud to have someone as engaged and dedicated as Sherry Lee Bream as a volunteer leader. And Don Rao, the executive director, and Mary Jawala, the Deputy Executive Director of the Art Carroll County are here to join me in congratulating Sherry Lee. Don or Mary Jo, would you like to say a few words? Well, good morning, everyone, and congratulations to all the people being recognized. So, you know, when, when you're an Executive Director and you, you ask somebody to, to chair your board, you, you hope for a couple of things. You know, you, you hope that they're going to attend all the board meetings and all the committee meetings. You hope that they're going to attend all the volunteer and fundraising events, really set the tone for financial giving for the organization, give, you know, outstanding sound advice to the executive director, write letters, advocate, develop relationships in the community, talk positively. You know, you just, you start out hoping for all those things and, and oftentimes that's, you know, that's exactly what happens and that's exactly what happened. Um, while Sherry Lee was, was president of the ARC. She, um, she came to every single event that we had. And then she also did what a lot of, um, I guess, board members and presidents um, don't always like to do, and that's review bylaws and update bylaws and all that other fun stuff. So Sherry Lee, thank you for your, your years of service as, as president of the board. And I'm, I'm also thrilled that you are able to stay on the board and, and help to, uh, to mentor and provide advice to, uh, to Corinne, our, our new president. So again, thank you for all that you do, not only for the ARC, but uh, for our community as well. Sherry Lee, would you like to say a few words? Yes, thank you very much. Well, first of all, I'd like to uh, tell you how much I appreciate this recognition. It's wonderful. And I was an educator for 40 years. And so it was a natural transition to get involved uh, with the Board of the ARC. And besides being involved with our clients and the staff, as Don said, I think what I enjoy most is just bragging about the ARC and spreading the word about the great things that our clients and the ARC do in the, uh, in the community and what they're accomplishing. Um, as, as Don said, I, I like to be active. I was a school administrator for a lot of years, was used to attending a lot of events for my high schools uh, where I was principal. And I, I just think that's a natural uh, role that anyone in leadership takes. And uh, like I said, I just like bragging about the ARC and our clients. And um, I hope that what I'm able to do by, uh, you know, doing that is bring more people into the uh, being involved with the ARC and supporting the ARC, not only uh, with their, you know, providing jobs and things like that for our clients, but also financially. So um, I'm just a huge supporter of everything that we're doing and I wanna continue that. So thank you very much. Thank you, Sherry Lee. All right, next we honor Rose Froelich from the ARC of Frederick County. Rose has been an incredible volunteer with the ARC of Frederick County during such an uncertain year. 
Rose, a psychology student at Walla Walla University, completed her internship with the Ark of Frederick County, which included leading a 10-week virtual class focusing primarily on farms. She carefully planned Zoom sessions and coordinated with expert guest speakers, much to the excitement of participants. Rose's successes were evident in the increasing popularity and attendance of the classes. It was inspiring to the chapter and they incorporated a guest speaker into their other virtual offerings. Eventually, Rose translated her enthusiastic approach into crafting classes, planning out activities that would incorporate materials they already had around the house. The genuine relationships she formed have inspired her to continue her volunteerism with people who have intellectual and developmental disabilities. Joining us to honor Rose today is Special Projects Director, Erin Stevens of the ARC Frederick County. Erin, I'll now turn it over to you for any additional remarks. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, we'd like to thank um, Rose um, and all of the um, um, chapter um, volunteers um, this morning. Thank you very much for all of your, your work and your dedication to the, to the various arts. Um, Rose, I wanna you know, thank you for your, your energy, your creativity, your enthusiasm as you um, coordinated and conducted your Zoom sessions. Um, you were an inspiration to the people that you served and the people that you helped and also an inspiration to the agency as we looked at quickly developing and expanding and um, continuing remote services. So thank you so much for all that you, you did for us. Um, you were an inspiration and um, we're carrying on um, some of what we learned from you in what we continue to do. So thank you very much, Rose. And again, congratulations to all the other winners too. Rose, would you like to make some remarks? Sure. Well, I just want to say thank you so much. I really enjoyed teaching um, the farms class and the art class as well. Great. Thank you so much. It sounds like it was a great partnership. All right. Now I'd like to recognize Matthew Hart of Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab, who opened new doors as a volunteer with the ARC Howard County. Working with Project Search, Matt helped create a virtual internship for aspiring professionals during the pandemic. When on-site internships with the Howard County government were brought to a halt, Matt was the catalyst in bringing APL managers on board to volunteer as intern mentors. Matt was also a great ambassador for the program, spreading the word about, of its mission. With the successful launch of the program, Matt and the ARC Howard County hope that the mentor-mentee relationships will continue after the year's program completes, leading to a better understanding of the abilities of people with IDD and increased employment opportunities. For his program leadership and commitment to advancing employment, Matt Hart is incredibly deserving of this award. And Cindy Parr, Executive Director of the ARC Howard County, is here today to join in the celebration of Matt and I now invite her to say a few words. Good morning. Congratulations to all the um, honorees today for your volunteerism uh, with the various ARCs around the state of Maryland. Um, I specifically would like to say congratulations to Matt. Matt uh, and I have um, had an interesting relationship over the last almost seven years. Matt has been extremely uh, dedicated and committed to helping us achieve our mission at the Ark of Howard County, always willing um, to look for new ways to do things. And certainly as we all embarked upon uh, what we didn't expect to see happen, which was a global pandemic and the effects that it would have on our uh, very um, individual communities, it was um, incredibly, um, I think, brilliant what he worked to come up with to create this mentorship program for our Project Search students. Our Project Search program is um, one that helps uh, students in their last year of public high school eligibility uh, increase uh, their skills and enhance their skill sets so they can go into the adult working world and find um, employment. And this was an a very challenging year in the respect that internships, as Andy stated in the um, remarks about Matt, were um, screech, came to a screeching halt at Howard County government. So it was really important for us to find ways to give our uh, students that opportunity. And Matt spearheaded this incredible effort with uh, probably about nine or 10 other APL professionals to 
work with our Project Search students to help them stay on track. And um, it is my understanding, and Matt, you don't have to say anything right now, but I think that we are looking to continue to uh, do things in an ongoing way. And it's because of his uh, dedication to our agency and his um, ability to push forward and get things done and work through uh, the, I don't want to call it the bureaucracy, but to some degree, the bureaucracy at APL. It was an incredibly successful program, and we're very thankful to Matt and all that he has done in this past year and the previous years to uh, forward our mission at the Ark of Howard County. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Cindy. Matt, would you like to say a few words? Sure. Thank you. Um, thank you for this recognition from the Ark of Maryland and from Cindy Parr. Um, <clears throat> I, you know, we were, it was immensely successful and that's due to the um, contributions of so many people. I want to recognize a few of them. First, I want to recognize Ann Darren, who many people here know as a strong advocate for the ARC. Um, I went to Ann early and said, um, you know, this is what's being asked of us and um, what do you think we should do? And, you know, I'm, I like to think of myself as more than a half, glass is half full person and it's, you know, overrunning. And she basically just gave me the nudge and the confidence to say, you know, staff will help, staff want outlets, they want to contribute, you can make this work. So she gave me the sort of the, handed the torch to me to say, make this happen, and gave me the all the encouragement that was needed. And then um, a person who worked with me hand in hand, it was indispensable in making this happen is Hannah Ko Kopak. Hannah is an early career professional at APL. And she essentially ran this day to day. Once we essentially, it made it, you know, it had its form and we had the requisite number of volunteers we would need to support all of the project search students. Hannah handled it on a day to day basis. I didn't really have to worry about um, anything uh, going wrong uh, or not being paid attention to. She took care of it. So her work was essential. Um, also to the APL mentors, since we did have, so there was Hannah and me and 10 other professionals who, you know, have regular day jobs, uh, but uh, we never, you know, we heard consistently from Cindy and the other uh, people who oversee the project search program that everything was going exceptionally well. And so we needed all 12 of us to sort of uh, commit to the, you know, stand up to the commitment that we had um, uh, made to the students. I wanna thank Cindy and Natalie Doner and uh, Kathy Vandercastle at uh, Howard County Public Schools. Uh, this is a team effort. We did it as a partnership. And uh, thank you for asking us to step up to this challenge. And then lastly, and maybe most importantly, is to the students, right? The students have the most courage. Um, they are, um, you know, deserve to be the center of this. And uh, I think we were all drew great satisfaction from uh, engaging and participating in this program. And as Cindy alluded to, we're just hoping, we're expecting it to continue and we're hoping that it will grow. So thank you again. Thank you, great, great partnerships. Again, I think we're seeing a trend of these incredible innovations and partnerships, so thank you. Um, I have the distinct honor of honoring uh, Donna DePamphlis, who's been an outstanding volunteer with the ARC Maryland, serving on our board of directors for two terms. During her volunteer service to the ARC, Donna has served on the highly committed and very important governmental affairs and education committees, bringing both professional and personal experience and expertise to the table when considering important statewide issues that would impact children and adults with IDD. With Donna's board service ending, we have no doubt she will continue her volunteer service through her committee work and perhaps board servitude elsewhere. We are appreciative of Donna's commitment to our mission and the organization's work over the years. Her presence and thoughtful contributions to our board will be greatly missed. And joining me this morning to recognize Donna is Lori Scott, our board vice president for the ARC Maryland. Lori, would you like to add any words? Sure, hi Donna and uh, good morning to everyone. Donna, we can't uh, thank you enough for all the work that you've um, done and, and the level of mentorship and advocacy and your voice around education and transition, not only just as a parent, which is so important um, that we have that voice, but also as a provider and someone who's working in the schools who understands the whole concepts of the educational system 
and how that impacts our transitioning youth and our young adults. And um, that has taught me a lot about understanding both sides of the, of the table, really, if you will. And so thank you so much for your dedication, your continued contribution, your voice, your ability to be able to say, hey, I want you to think about it this way, remember this, think about that in your gentle way, Donna. And um, I will, I really hope that you'll continue to work with us and uh, be a continued partner in the transitioning youth world as you continue your job and as an advocate teaching other parents how to uh, work through that system and really understand it. So thank you so much for all you've done, Donna. I really appreciate working side by side with you. So thank you and congratulations to you on this award. Yeah, Donna, I echo that. Would you like to say a few remarks? Well, now that I'm all choked up, um, thank you all um, for the recognition. I just believe that as a parent and as an educator, it is our job to advocate for individuals with disabilities. So as much as my term has ended, I don't think I'm gonna stop advocating because it's a need, especially as a parent of a young adult with disabilities, we have to keep advocating for their rights. And I'm just thankful for the ARC that is always there advocating for the rights. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. Next, we honor Stephanie Katz, who's been a board member with the ARC Montgomery County since 2014, serving as the president for the last four of those years. Stephanie takes her commitment as a leader seriously, leading board meetings and attending almost every committee meeting. She asks insightful questions and frequently offers suggestions that help solve outstanding issues. Stephanie works diligently to connect people to the ARC Montgomery County as volunteers, donors, sponsors, and employees. On a personal level, she sets an example for other board members by supporting the organization's events and fundraising appeals. Her dedication and devotion are unmatched, and she is unquestionably worthy of being the ARC Montgomery County's honoree for this award. And joining me to honor Stephanie to this morning is Daria Cervantes, the CEO of the ARC Montgomery County. Daria, would you like to say a few words? Good morning, everyone. Stephanie, congratulations. I've had the pleasure of knowing Stephanie for over 18 years. And the one word that always comes to mind when I think of Stephanie is dynamo. She is really like the Energizer Bunny. She goes from morning to night nonstop and she has her own business. She is a networking champion and she always, always, always works the Ark Montgomery County into all of her interactions. She is a true ambassador for us. She has made multiple connections for us um, for everything from services that we need to PPE during the pandemic. And, you know, looking back at Stephanie's term as president, I'm sure she never imagined having to do a headquarters relocation, surviving through a pandemic with us. So it's really run the gamut. So Stephanie, on behalf of everyone, thank you for all that you've done. And even though your term as president is ending, we are very happy to know we'll still have you as more So once again, congratulations. Thank you. Stephanie, do you want to say any more words or thank you is yours? <laughs> I do have some words. <laughs> okay. First, I'd like to congratulate all of my fellow award winners and thanks to the ARC Maryland and the ARC Montgomery County. And thanks to all of our staff, volunteers and board at the ARC Montgomery County for stepping up their resiliency and determination during this past year. I am truly proud to represent them and honored to receive the award, especially being able to celebrate virtually this morning as well as tonight with so many friends, colleagues, and family. Time passes in the blink of an eye. Hard to believe it's been 18 years since the ARC Montgomery County first gained a special place in my heart. Giving back to the community has always been an essential building block of my DNA. And I am fortunate to have been able to dedicate so many years to helping connect people of all ages and abilities with their communities to build inclusive and fulfilling lives. During the time I've been volunteering with the ARC Montgomery County, we've certainly made strides towards creating a better world for those with IDD 
to enjoy equal rights and opportunities. Our organization is essential in supporting people with and without disabilities. As board president, I've worked to raise our name awareness in the community and connect with other businesses. Last month, we had our first coffee and conversations event where so many of our community professionals participated in virtual education and networking sessions. For some, it was even their first experience with an ARC chapter. It is my sincere hope that many of the attendees will become active future chapter volunteers and maybe even be up here one day receiving the Chapter Volunteer of the Year Award as I've had the privilege of doing today. Thanks. Thank you. Next, we honor Lieutenant Hugh John Doherty as Volunteer uh, um, of the Year for the ARC Northern Chesapeake Region. The, uh, John, Lieutenant Hugh John Doherty has been a volunteer with the ARC Northern Chesapeake Region over the past four years. As the chair of their standing committee during this time, Lieutenant Doherty has required that he sign all of the incident reports that were sent to the DDA. Lieutenant Doherty's Doherty's support to the agency has, however, gone beyond his board contributions. In the past, a new person that Chapter supported was struggling to adjust to their new environment. Knowing their love for the police and fire department, Lieutenant Doherty decided to visit them, much to their excitement. Lieutenant Doherty is always more than willing to share guidance, resources, and his network. Thank you, Lieutenant, for your service to our mission. Joining us this morning to share in the celebration of Lieutenant Hugh John Darty is Sean Cross, the CEO of the ARC Northern Chesapeake Region. Sean, would you like to add a few words? Thank you, Andy, sure. Well, good morning, everyone, and congratulations to all of the amazing award winners today. It's been um, very inspiring to hear all the stories and the impact that you all have on um, our local chapters. Um, I am extremely excited um, to honor Lieutenant Hugh John. Um, you have always been a breath of fresh air when we would run into each other in the hallways. Um, there's just a presence about um, you and you're calm and kind and you have a perspective that has been very helpful to not only the people we support, but also um, to all of our team members. So you're a phone call, an email away when we have a concern or some questions about what's happening, you know, from a from from your perspective. So thank you so much for supporting um, us over the years and um, everything that you have done to contribute to just the well-being of not just the people we support, like I said, um, but our team members. Thank you, Hugh John. Lieutenant Hugh John, would you like to say a few words? Uh, yes, I would. I just want to say thank you very much for um, this great honor and congratulations to all the other honorees. And I want to thank um, Sean and all the other folks and friends that I have at the ARC Northern Chesapeake region. Um, it's been great working with you all. I've had a lot of uh, good experiences. And it's given me some really um, outstanding ways to get out in the community and continue to serve. And thank you again for this honor. Thank you. Next, we honor Sloan Gabrielle Butler. Sloan Gabrielle Butler is a dedicated volunteer at the ARC Prince George's County. Every Monday over the past several months, she assisted with the chapter's food distribution program for individuals with IDD and senior citizens in the county. In addition to volunteering at the chapter's vaccination clinics, she helped coordinate visits with Governor Hogan and Congressman Anthony Brown when they toured the clinics. Sloan has also offered stellar administrative support as she prepared hundreds of tax receipts for mailing and adeptly managed a gift package mailing for holiday donors. While volunteering, Sloan has demonstrated a level of maturity and selflessness that extends far beyond her years. She's a passionate, detail-oriented, focused, and calm leader. She has exceeded expectations for every task with enthusiasm and laser-like focus. Thank you, Sloan, for your service. 
Joining me to honor Sloan this morning is Rob Malone, Executive Director of the ARC Prince George's County. Rob, would you like to add a few words? Yes, I would. Thank you very much, Andy. And um, I join all the, uh, you and all the other uh, chapter executives for um, celebrating our honorees today. I, I feel like the, the cumulative, cumulative impact of all these volunteers, we could start at an 11th chapter. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. And so I'm kind of giddy over here uh, right now because I love volunteering. I love service uh, personally myself. Uh, but today I get to just add on a little bit of icing to our celebration for Sloan Gabrielle Butler, who has absolutely been outstanding. She has uh, volunteered for almost every uh, situation you could imagine in our chapter. I think we have probably violated some Maryland state employment laws, but um, anyway, uh, she's been terrific. <laughs> Uh, you, you've heard about her uh, engagement in so many different ways, whether it was food distribution, helping with the marketing and fundraising department, uh, the vaccine clinics, and also don't, don't forget, food distribution was outdoors even when it was in the winter months. And so again, every Monday, uh, almost every time I would come to the office, she was out there with the team serving uh, the people in our community as well as seniors uh, over the age of 60 in Prince George's County. So I wanna just celebrate her and uh, thank her so much uh, for her support. I know Shay Friedland is on the call as well here today from our marketing department and Sloan, we really appreciate you and you, you by far were the most outstanding volunteer of the year for the ARC Prince George's County. Congratulations to you. Sloan, would you like to say a few words? Um, yeah, just something real quick. Um, so thank you and um, congratulations to all the honorees that are here today. Um, and honestly, like I'm just, I can't stop smiling, but um, really, I'm, yeah, I'm just gonna say thank you. Um, and thank you for nominating me and like for just um, recognizing the work. Cause honestly, like I, the art to me is like a hidden gem. Like I didn't even realize it was there until I got there, but being a part and being able to volunteer there has been like one of the biggest things in my life so far. So thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, and again, congratulations to everyone. Thank you, Sloan Gabrielle. Next, we honor the Leonardtown High School National Honor Society. They have been a welcome addition to the ARC Southern Maryland's community. Members of the National Honor Society began delivering meals to individuals the chapter supports through their Meals Made with Love program. During the holiday season, 10 high school students and their families prepared delicious meals and delivered them to each of the ARC Southern Maryland's houses in St. Mary's County. Students' involvement with the agency quickly expanded with the introduction of a pen pal program. As students and individuals supported by the chapter began writing with each other, great relationships were formed. Each participant now eagerly awaits the next message from their new friend. Representing the Honor Society this morning are students Lyric Scriber and Anthony Ramat. And joining me to honor them is Mr. Terry Long, the CEO of the ARC Southern Maryland. Terry, would you like to add anything? Yes, I would. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, being a ARC, you reach out to community, community groups all the time, and you really don't know what kind of uh, effect that has. But during the pandemic, it's amazing what uh, the Honor Society and the churches and the Boy Scouts has really given back to the uh, uh, ARC is amazing. It's overwhelming. The Boy Scouts uh, built uh, picnic tables for our residential homes so uh, residents could go out and eat outside. Uh, churches made masks for our, our staff and, and uh, individuals and it's just overwhelming um, uh, what 
uh, people as well as local government stepping up and giving us PPE and testing equipment and and kind of pushing us ahead in the line for vaccinations for our individuals. It's been overwhelming and uh, we are very lucky to be uh, in a uh, community that's really supported by um, its members. So uh, again, we're very proud of the uh, young people of uh, all the efforts they have put into uh, uh, making meals. The uh, individuals in the houses have loved uh, waiting for them and, and interacting with them. So uh, again, uh, we want to thank the National uh, um, Honor Society for all the work they've done during our, this pandemic. Thank you, Terry. Uh, Lyric and Anthony, would you like to say a few words? Um, yes, uh, thank you so much again for this opportunity. It was a pleasant surprise and congratulations to everyone else. Um, the ARC was not an um, organization that not a lot of them, our members knew about. So it was a great opportunity for everyone to get exposed to this uh, diverse environment. And we hope to work with them in the future as well. I will also like to say some few words. I just wanna like thank everyone for inviting us here today and giving us this award. Um, thank you for that. And thank you, cause it's my first year joining like the ARC family. And it's been a great year, even with the pandemic, like we worked through it. And I just wanna thank all the members in the National Honor Society, because I know like through the 60 of us, we've worked together and we were able to like provide these meals to and participate in the pandemic pen pals. And I wanna, Thank Larrick for inspiring me. Um, even though, like, she kind of like hand in hand, she's really, she really, in, she really inspired me to um, go out and help out in the community. And thank everyone else because just we seem like the young people, and I'm just so excited to continue our journey with the Ark. So thank you so much for that. Thank you both. And, and just so you both know, once uh, an Ark family member, always part of the Ark family. So you're welcome, always. Um, so our final honoree this morning is Mr. Bob Bodell of the ARC Washington County. Bob Bodell has been part of the ARC Washington County's Board of Directors since 2015, serving as their president since 2017. During his tenure, the ARC Washington County has seen advances in service quality and financial stability that have solidified the organization as a provider of choice in Washington County. Under Bob's guidance, the chapter has seen an 87% decrease in hands-on behavior interventions. The establishment of the ARC Washington County's Endowment Fund and a capital campaign that raised over $5.75 million to renovate more than 30,000 square feet of facilities. Thank you, Mr. Bodell, for all you do for our community. Joining us this morning to thank and congratulate Bob is Troy Vanskoy, the executive director of the ARC Washington County. Troy, would you like to add a few words? I would, thank you, Andy. Uh, quickly, just uh, congratulations to all the award winners this morning. Uh, thank you for all of your contributions to the missions of the organizations. Uh, we truly could not do what we do without your support and service to the organization. Uh, Bob's been uh, part of our board now for six years. Um, as Andy outlined his contributions, uh, have been unprecedented. Um, it's been an amazing uh, transformation uh, that Bob has led the organization through. And as a parent, he's got a, a keen interest in the organization and the supports that, that we provide. In addition to uh, his contributions around the financial stability of the organization, um, he has also led us, uh, led the board and the organization through becoming an employment first organization, uh, more community based. And, and a person-centered organization. Uh, the results of that, as Andy mentioned, uh, have, been, uh, uh, have been significant. So we are uh, truly appreciative. Um, it, it's important to note that, that Bob has, has led us not just through the, the, the fun times, but also through the difficult times, right? Um, in 2019, we experienced a large-scale ransomware attack. Uh, followed just a few months after by uh, a worldwide pandemic. So he has uh, capped his service to the organization and I think is uh, uh, very much looking forward to passing the gavel. 
Um, so, Bob, appreciate your service. Uh, thank you for everything you've done. Thank you, Troy. Bob, would you like to say a few words? Uh, sure. First, thank you uh, to the ARC of Washington County and the ARC of Maryland for the honor. And congratulations to all the other honorees. Obviously, it's a lot of, a lot of volunteer work that gets done. Um, as Troy said, I've been involved for seven years since our son Carter started uh, at the ARC. Uh, six years on the board, four years as president working with Troy. And um, there's been a lot to get done at, at, from the ARC of Washington County. I think a couple of highlights, Troy mentioned one, it's a big one, moving from persons, moving to a centered person person-centered community-based employment first program. Um, when, when I was first there on the board and Troy came, it was a pretty much of a laid back group of people helping other people in the community. And we've uh, helped that move to a financially sound organization focused on what we call our pillars of excellence that are really helping people to be the best they can be. Um, we started our first golf outing fundraiser, which has raised you know quite a bit of money over the last five years. Uh, and then obviously being involved in the now over $6 million capital campaign that raised money to rehab the facilities. And as, as is important to form a foundation, endowment foundation for the DSPs that work with uh, all, our, all our clients. Um, you know, with, without Carter, uh, my wife and I probably would have never known the ARC existed. And there are, are so many people that make all this happen. And we'd just like to say thank you to them. Thank you so much. What a great way to end with you. Um, and so everyone, this concludes our celebration for the statewide chapter volunteers of the year. Thank you all again for joining us this morning and starting off this important day right. And thank you to the honorees for continuing the tradition of excellence of the ARC. Your contributions inspire and energize us and ensure that we continue to be the best we can be. I now invite you to change your screen view back to gallery view if you haven't already done so and to unmute yourself. And also if you haven't already thrown your streamers, please join me now in celebrating our chapter volunteers through a fun little streamer extravaganza. These things are great. So hopefully you get these out of your box and Congratulations to all the volunteers of the year and thank you for all you do for the art community. Yay! Woohoo! <laughs> Thanks everybody. Bye. Outstanding have, work. Have a great day. Thank you. Wonderful day. Bye. Day, Congrats everybody. everyone. Bye. I'm, in, I'm inspired to go to work. Thank this you. is outstanding. <laughs> Congratulations everyone. Congratulations. Congrats everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Standing. Bye, everybody. <laughs>